Welcome to the lunch. And um, what I'd like to do is to say we're going to start a few minutes early because Zig needs to catch a plane. So we're going to go for about 15 minutes. And what I've done is collected some questions. Thank you for those of you that turned those questions in. And we'll just have some casual conversation. Uh, I'd like to just start off by saying I think we have today two of the uh, most brilliant minds in personal development living today. Would you all agree with that? And what I'd like to do is to, to uh, start off with one question for uh, Jim and then one for Zig and then we'll kind of go back and forth and you know if you guys w both want to answer the questions you can. First question to Jim is uh, what is true success? Well, somebody once said to me, you know, success isn't everything and I think what they meant was money isn't everything but uh, that's a good note to make. Success is everything. First to succeed to survive and then to succeed to flourish in every part of your life. So success is everything. First we must take the seasons and learn how to use them with the seed, the soil, the sunshine and the rain to you know sustain ourselves and our family. Then we must use the economy to succeed. We must use uh, the community, whatever is around us. Gather up all the education we can in order to succeed. Good question to ask mature people. If you could do better, should you? And I think almost everybody would answer that question in the positive. If you could improve your health, shouldn't you do that? If you could learn more, shouldn't you do that? Uh, if you could earn more and share more, shouldn't you do that? And I think that's really what success is all about. It's not just a destination uh, that's set for everybody to try to go for. It's like Zig said today, improving in every area of your life to see if you can't with satisfaction at the end of the day, at the end of the week, at the end of the month, at the end of the year, say, I have made excellent progress this year for myself, my family, my business, my career, my health. And I think that kind of success everybody realizes is legitimate. It's something we should strive for. There's an interesting phrase in the Bible that says, strive for perfection. Not quite giving us the idea that we could reach it, but the key is in the striving. To be better today than yesterday, better this year than last year. Our speech, our language, our health, everything we can possibly think of. So, good. it is good to succeed. Thanks, Jim. How about this one for you, Zig? Uh, how do you know you have a good goal? How about that one? Well, a good goal, number one, is uh, your goal. You don't let somebody else set it for you, as so often happens. Number two, you ask the question, uh, how does this goal fit in with the rest of my game plan? Will this take me closer to or further from uh, my major objective? Number three, you would ask the question, is it morally right and fair to everyone concerned? Then I always ask an additional uh, question. I have a little acrostic, G-O-A-L-S, and it uh, simply says, godly objectives assure lasting success. So uh, I always uh, do a lot of praying if it's, you know, I don't pray about which clothes I should wear today. <laughs> I just ask the redhead about that. Uh, but uh, I do pray about those things that, you know, really are significant. And if you can't commit yourself emotionally to reach that goal, then it is not a good goal. Good. How about one for either one of you? If you had one wish for mankind, what would that be? Either one of you want to take that one on? Well, I think the greatest wish for mankind and each individual included in mankind is to have a sense of awareness of both things physical and things spiritual so that you could combine all of your learning into a lifetime and see what all you can become. I think that's it, the gift of awareness, the gift of discovery, the gift of finding out more and more about life, about God, about people, about politics, and about economy, possibilities, opportunities. So probably the greatest gift is the gift of discovery. Any thoughts on that? Well, you know, I, of course, I'm highly prejudiced, you know. Uh, as a Christian, if I were to wish anything, it would, that others would come to know and experience the joy the excitement, the satisfaction, the peace, the security that I feel. The Bible says all things work together for good to those who love God, who are called to serve according to his purpose. 
And what that enables me to do when I stub my toe, when the quote, uh, things happen that I don't like, I instinctively think, well, I wonder why God's got up his sleeve for this. I know it's better around the corner. Uh, traditionally, uh, sometimes we think failure is a failure when it's not. For example, uh, the Edsel motor car, you know, everybody thought it was a failure. But the technology that came out of that produced the Mustang and then later the Taurus. So a lot of time when we belittle ourselves, you know, we haven't really failed. It's just a different direction we're going to be successful in. As you know, I'm the optimist. And, uh, <laughs> How about this one, Jim? What keeps expanding your vision for the future? Well, for me personally, it's just to keep doing what I've, you know, been called to do or found the opportunity to do. Both Zig Ziglar, Jim Rohn have this incredible, unbelievable opportunity from where we came from to where we are to uh, spend a big share of our lives, you know, touching somebody else's life, making a contribution, writing books, putting it on video, putting it on cassettes, CDs, whatever manner possible, because ideas can make such an incredible difference in someone's life. And then we have the unusual opportunity of having our name appear in someone's testimonial. And already today, someone says, you know, Mr. Owen, five years ago, 10 years ago, 30 years ago, I attended your seminar, sat in a class, talked to you personally, and here's what's happened to me, my family, my future, my health. And for Zig and I, I, I think that's almost overwhelming in terms of um, opportunity to uh, make a contribution to somebody else's life. Investing life into life, you can't have a better experience than that. And for me, it's just uh, hopefully it'll continue, you know, forever and ever. My father lived to be 93, and so Zig, I'm gonna try to sail right on by that <laughs> to see if I can't uh, have a good long life sharing ideas, talking about things that matter with people who care. I got one for you, Zig, on kids. How about this one? What are the best ideas you have for raising kids today, today? <laughs> Emphasis no on today, okay. No, what's the best idea for raising kids? No question about it in my mind. Number one, you love them unconditionally. Uh, number two, you start each day with them properly and end each day with them properly. By that I mean you awaken your children as you awakened your newborn babe. Lovingly, kindly, gently, affectionately, talking to them every step of the way. And when the kids get older, we have a tendency to bang on the door and say, get up, time to go. But waking them slowly and gently and say, you're going to have a wonderful day. You're going to learn some things. I can't wait for this evening when you can tell me all the fun you had and what you learned today. Then at night, if bedtime is 9 o'clock, at 8 o'clock, you say, okay, 9 o'clock we go to bed. You need to put the dog out and bring the bicycle in, call Charlie about the assignment, get both drinks of water, take all three trips to the bathroom, because at nine o'clock we go to bed. At nine o'clock you cut the TV off, you lead them to the bedroom, and you spend a precious few moments with them. You bond with your child more the last few minutes than you have all day long. And if you start the day right and end the day right, time in between is gonna be a lot better. You're demonstrating your love for them by giving them your time. I got a question for both of you. How about this one? If you had to live your life over, what's one thing that you would do differently? I want to think about that one for a minute. One well, thing you'd do differently, Jim. You know, I'd try to learn a lot quicker than I did. I mean, some, <laughs> things, uh, some things came a little slow. Um, I caught on to goal setting right away, but some things on personal development, you know, giving up my blame list, really taking a look at myself, making all those changes. Uh, I would have hoped I could have accelerated a lot faster than I did. But then once you reach a certain place, as Zig knows, you finally start gaining momentum. And Zig talked about all those years, right, the struggling years, and then finally, when the breakthrough came, uh, the momentum and the success after that would just come piling out, right? Things just started incredibly happening. So that's one thing I would change. If, I should have listened to my mother and my father earlier, sooner, and I think I could have had, uh, you know, about another 20 extra glorious years. How about you, Zig? One thing you would have done differently. Fortunately, a lady answered that question for me a number of years ago. I wish I'd remembered her name. Uh, I wouldn't do anything differently. 
And because what she said was, if I changed anything, I might not be where I am. And I really like where I am. I'm more excited about my life than I've ever been in my life. Somebody asked me the other day, he said, what keeps you going? And I said, the U.S. mail. <laughs> they said, what? I said, I get the letters, I get the email, I get all of those things. Mm. And that's the reason I would not change anything. Uh, I love my relationship with my family. I love my profession, what I'm doing. I love to speak, I love to write, I love to do the research. Uh, I love to interchange with people. Uh, so no, I wouldn't change a thing. Okay, last question. What would you say, Jim, what's the basis, what basis does one use to create their major definite purpose? On what basis I, does I one think use? that, you know, that gathers up over time. You ask kids what they want to be at first, right? And it's, you know, a whole variety of things. And after a while that says, well, no, I'm not that interested in that. You know, that sort of slips away. So it takes a while to finally develop an ultimate purpose in life. I think the grand purpose is to be, you know, uniquely successful in every area of your life. But I would say, let it unfold. You might spend several years doing one thing and certainly a door of opportunity will open and now that becomes something big. You couldn't have seen that purpose 10 years earlier and now suddenly by circumstance and by meeting someone, doors open that you never thought were gonna open. Now some even larger purpose than you dreamed of before is now available. How about you, Zig? What's my, the basis, you get it? Uh, my ma mission statement is rather presumptuous to be the difference maker in the personal, family, and professional lives of enough people to make a positive difference in the world. Now that does sound presumptuous until you remember the story of the grandfather walking his grandson on the beach and every few steps he would reach down, the grandfather would, and throw a, a sand dollar out to sea. Did that quite a little while and the grandson said, Granddaddy, what are you doing? He said, well, uh, grand, uh, he said, son, these uh, sand dollars are living organisms. If I don't throw them out to sea, they will die in the hot sun. Grandson said, but granddaddy, there's so many of them. What difference does it make? The grandfather reached down, and picked up one, threw it out to sea and said, for this one, it makes all the difference in the world. I have 25 people on my wall of gratitude who made a difference in my life. And I like to be the difference maker. God's blessed me incredibly. My works are now in 37 languages. Uh, my tapes are all over the world. My books are all over the world, almost. And uh, it's just, a, it's just an unbelievable thrill to, uh, to be able to do what I'm doing. Uh, mine is just to keep on studying, keep on learning, keep on trying to get better at what I do. Let's give these two gentlemen yeah. a uh, round of applause. All right. Thank you. Two of the greatest. Two of the greatest. Two of the greatest.